some of them stick to that that hour way too hard and they're yeah. very abrupt about it they're like that's it motherfucker yeah. get out I know, <laughs> like, I know. and they just change they're like they go from if you're just tuning in we're talking about therapy real quick some therapists will be like hey I'm empathetic. I'm hearing you. I'm loving you. And then right when that therapy hour hits, they're like, now stand up. It's change. It's like a yeah. flip of the coin. They're it like, okay, that's it. Fuck you. Get out. Bye. And it's like, wait, what? Where'd you go? I know they make you think they really like they could really care about you. And maybe they do. Maybe they do care about you in some clinical way or in, in, some... in the therapy hour. <laughs> right. But and but they really make you feel that way. And then the second it's over, it's like. I don't know who you are. You're a stranger. Get out of my office. Get your dirty ass off my couch. <laughs> yeah. Check your check next time. When am I seeing you again? Check with my secretary. Right. Get the fuck. Get out. Yeah. Wait, I can't yeah. check with you. I said, get out. They forget your it's... name. They're like, who are you? Go, go, I... just get out. What if the hour hits and they go, what are you doing in here? Who are you? Yeah. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> like, it's it like, um, is like a nightmare. <laughs> what's that Apple show? What's, what's his name in it? The... Oh, oh yeah, the Harrison Ford, like that. No, no, the TV show with Adam. What's his name? Where? Oh, 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 uh, um, Severance. In, in Severance. That's what it's yeah. like. That anytime the therapy, they're like, oh, uh. yeah. I don't get, get out of here, dude. It's Severance like, uh, is so good. I want it I've back had... now. I know. So just take I've... a couple minutes and tell me about the trauma that you did have with your mother back when you were six again. Oh, that's okay. Wait a minute. They just <laughs> phone and they call 911 because they think somebody broke in. <laughs> yep. 911, I have a stranger in my office. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Just you <laughs> in tears. <laughs> you just, we just, I mean, you said we had a breakthrough. <laughs> they tackle you. They hold you down. They're like, I'm going to hold you until they get here. I wonder what Easy. the ramifications of that are. Like you know, doctor, we this is a this is the subject of a lot of jokes in movies and TV shows and shit. The doctor is being late, or the doctor is being not personable, or but the second you're late, there's like punishments and there's like you know, uh, like monetary. Oh yeah. Punishments like they well they charge you the price of the whole visit if you're like 30 minutes late or something. And you can't and your insurance won't cover that. They're like, here's right. the full price. Yeah. Right. It's crazy because it's like, but they could be as late as they want. They control what they control what happens in there. And you have no say in it. No. There's a whole there's a it's called unconditional positive regard, and it lasts for exactly 50 minutes. And there's a reason for that. Wait, what's it okay. called? Uncondition Unconditional positive regard. <laughs> this is this that's that's the thing we should all have with yeah. other humans. Like for initially. fifty minutes, yeah. for fifty yeah. minutes at <laughs> top. Yes. <laughs> what if everybody starts their watch timer? Dude, okay, excuse me, sir. Yeah, I was wondering where can I find the? Uh, there's this restaurant I saw online, and uh, you're the concierge, right? And so there's this there's this apple fritter that's supposedly famous or whatever, and it's like clocks running down, and they're like, oh yeah, uh, absolutely, let me check it out. And it's like you, you can see the timer on the side of the screen going down, and it's like real jovial and nice. And then as soon as it hits the fifty second mark, it's like, okay, we're done. You get out of here now. We're done. That's as nice as I get. Oh, it's an apple. Go fuck yourself. That's about that. You. <laughs> Take that? Yeah. How about you take and get out? Flip the table. Go! <laughs> Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people guess them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with you. That's good. Uh, Guys, welcome to the Valley Cast. Hi. Welcome. How are you? Sorry. You caught us in mid-conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We got, we my, got um, Beretta, We got an alien here. What's up, buddy? What up, what up? My wife had a a therapy thing last week where that thing happened where the the minute hit but she will keep an eye on like well you know you kind of get a feeling for 50 minutes when you're doing the therapy uh -huh. thing and the therapist cut it short and she was like oh okay i guess we're done and she was in the elevator and she gets a call from her therapist was like i'm so sorry i looked at the clock wrong and uh you still had time left in your your hour you had like five minutes left and she was like it's okay and they laughed about it and then the next session grace was 15 minutes late and i was like how's this gonna go this is gonna be exciting <laughs> and then the therapist was like oh it's okay um uh I'll, it will count it as t 10 and i'll give you uh, five at the end and so it's like oh i think minutes is like a currency for them wow, where they're they like were, if they you were take bartering some, a little bit yeah and they're like if you get i took five minutes i give you five minutes now back and if you like, give well, me crazy. five minutes today i will kindly give you five yeah and a hamburger <laughs> on tuesday and i've had the thing dude where i will at like fit like 40 
seven minutes in, I'll start doing the like lean forward kind of yeah. like, well, I'm kind of done here. here. <laughs> and I've had the, my therapist go, no, 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 no. We're not done yet. We still have time. Whoa. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to because I'll get uncomfortable right at the end. And I'll be like, I don't want to talk about that. But I'm, and it's like, no, you're staying here. Yeah. Yeah. I it's it, it is a real interesting world, the whole therapy world, and especially in that regard. It's like, you know, the, and you do get to that point where it's it's it, it ends earlier and they're like, well, anyway, got to go. And it's like only in a world where the therapist made the big mistake, like with Grace, where they're like, fuck, you had 50 more minutes or whatever. 40 you had minutes so or... much unconditional positive regard <laughs> left on the table. Yeah, exactly. Oh. It's like one of those things where it's, it's only then that you could like negotiate time with your therapist like there's no other way to negotiate time like you can't be like hey in this session can i leave 10 minutes early but in the next one i get that 10 minutes back and it's no, like no, no, absolutely no, no, not no 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 no, no. <laughs> no. You like, your the mind? fucking therapist <laughs> fucked up real bad <laughs> and they're like shit i accidentally whatever and it's like well well then i'll get that time in the next session Hmm. Do you they think just everybody, hold all the cards? It's bullshit. All these therapists have like an actual like therapy boss, and they have like they have they have to have minute <laughs> fulfillment throughout the day. Control therapist, yeah. and and that's why Grace's therapist called Grace because she was like, "Fuck, I fucked up." My therapist boss is going to be so upset yep. because there's five minutes of positive regard <laughs> still on the table. Boss. What yep. am I going to do? What am I going to do? They're like drug dealers. Like, yeah. you get rid of all your positive regard. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mikowski, uh, yes, uh, I hope it's a wonderful day today. Uh, I have had three uh, clients today. Yes, yes, only one of them was under. Uh, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fired. I had one, I had a couple weeks ago. I went into therapy, and there's a little waiting room outside the office where you go in and you press the button so that he knows that I'm there. And I get there and I walk into this little tiny waiting room that's just got big enough for two chairs. And he's got a space heater on in there. And it's like, it was like nine, it was like 110 degrees in this room. Yes, and I was like, terrible. mother, I was like, what are you doing? And so I just sat there and started sweating and kind of panicking a little bit. And I'm like hitting the button and like, hey, I'm here. And he comes in and he goes, Jesus Christ, it's hot in here. And I was like, yeah, man. I was like, are you trying to kill me? And he was like, you should have texted me. It's way too hot. And I was like, I just thought this was part of your like therapeutic process. Where you you should have texted to, like, me. You should have taken your pants off. Maybe your coat, maybe your shirt. Sure. Yeah. Why are you? Why do you still have clothes on? I see you're beating with sweat. Like, let me see that. Let's go. Oh, that's you crazy. Want a massage? I'll make you feel better. The session where I have to break down your will and make it really hot in here doesn't <laughs> happen for another couple of weeks. <laughs> I was like, is this warfare? Is this psychological this is warfare? Torture. <laughs> oh, therapy. Isn't there it nice, go. boys? It's uh, good times. So I saw I was scrolling through Reddit, and uh, I don't know if you guys knew about this, but Timothy Chalamet. Can I? Is, can we talk about Timothy? We can talk about Timothy. Wow, your boy's got some long hair there. Yeah, dude, yeah. but I'm catching up. Look at this. You guys gonna both be long hair boys? You are not even close. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah you're not yeah, even you're close, dude. Not even close. <laughs> I mean, the, I'd say six months, and you'll be where Jackson is. I'm good. Yeah, you'll never get hit. You'll never get the youth he has back. Mm -mm. No, certainly not. You'll have to steal that in another way using oh. the occult. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we can. I'm, done. Uh, I'm down to talk about Timothy Chalamet. I have some things to say, but Elliot, what do you got? I've been thinking a lot about Timothy. Okay. And, uh, Is I that think really that how you pronounce his name, Timothy? That was my kind of fucking jumping off point. Can't take it yeah. timothy chalmet timothy really chalmet timothy, timothy uh -huh. chalmet is how you actually pronounce it timothy chalmet and his middle name is something like paul or something like not paul but very um bland chris his real name is chris <laughs> just What's chris. It? so he was born in manhattan so that doesn't call for a timothy unless you're like you timothy know. Jesus Christ! I wait, know it's wait, wait. impossible. I can't tell if you're being. Is it really that? Or are you it's one hundred percent that? And oh, I know I because you're I, a... oh. you know, I clicked on an interview with him where he explains the pronunciation of his name, and he always explains it in the exact same way. You know how stars have certain like 
quips that they lean on. And he has one that I've seen him now repeat many times. I don't know uh, why, but I went down a little bit of a deep dive. And he basically every time goes, yeah, it's pronounced Timote, but you can pronounce it honestly, however you want. You can call me Ryan or Paul or whatever. And then he gets a big laugh and he says that line every Every Tim- time, Tim- because Tim- Paul sounds- is the name of his character in Dune, and uh, is that why? This is, is before, that but it's. I think he switches it up, but yeah, I think he leans on Paul, and I don't know if he has been doing it since then. Timothy, Tim- he, he does like, like Gary the name of a like Mother Goose rhyme, is what Timothy Tim- 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 sounds like. Uh-huh. Little tiny Timothy, his name was kind of goofy, but you would uh, never guess it. He starred in all the movies. The girlies really liked him. His face was kind of <laughs> cute. But Timothy Everday couldn't pronounce his name to boot. <laughs> <laughs> I think couldn't pronounce his own name to boot. <laughs> my two observations, and then I want to see, I want to move on to see what you guys are saying. But my two observations about Timothy Chalamet are one, I think his face is made of bones, and two, I his think he's incredibly, I think he's incredibly talented, and I like him. I think he's a charming, good actor. And I'm sick of the hate because I think it's based on a lot of jealousy. And I think a lot of this new young pantheon of stars are actually really great. And I think that they seem like down to earth for being as famous as they are. And I think they all seem likable and talented and and good, except for um, Zendaya. Well, I'll tell oh, you that, something about that just kidding, is as just hot, hot as it gets, dude. I think she's the sweetest. Yeah. <laughs> I will say something about Zendaya is I I just wasn't ready to just watch her frown for two hours, and then and in the new Dune movie, and she I was did, like, <laughs> and I was like, uh, I, you get st- you got something other than frown face in that arsenal there, Zendaya, and then yeah. I was watching some of the Spider Man clips and stuff and she's really good at that frown face that she just keeps kind of doing and i'm wondering does zendaya have range i think she does but she have hasn't been given it in or film. does she play kind of the same have Take you watched uh 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 god dang old euphoria man, euphoria no i refuse to watch children uh doing sexualized things in, uh, even if they're over 18 or whatever because they are depicted as children and it makes me feel like a dirty old man hmm. Hmm. well we watch every episode so <laughs> don't take it away so i actually i've never watched it i just watch know it 1.5 speed she's been doing the she's been doing the post uh the post disney like i'm growing up and doing like adult theme type stuff for a while now so i don't know biggest star in the world seems to be doing it right yeah i mean you know i mean let's be honest we're there's a lot of aesthetics that go into why these are the biggest stars in the world a little bit more so than say maybe their skill sets i'm speaking to you sydney sweeney who is our guest today on the show Sydney, why haven't you said anything yet? (laughs) 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 That's my trailer. That's my new favorite bit is that that's what Sydney Swidney actually sounds like. So, Sydney, what was it like working on Madam Web? But I will say, you know, she's very attractive, obviously, and you know, whatever. Pervert, pervert. Uh, pervert. But, but pervert. I don't think she's. I don't think she really has any range either. I think uh, when it comes to that, they get there eventually, if, especially with all the reps they're getting. Uh, well, here's I, here. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, I think you know, as Elliot was saying, they're all young, and I think. I think when you're starting at that age, for the most part, in general, it comes down to presence and look and charisma. I think everybody that we're talking about has presence and they have look and they have charisma. And I think the chops will come as they go. Because I agree with Elliot. Uh, I would say a year ago, I was probably like, yeah, that Timotei, whatever. He's just a cute person, but he doesn't have much. But after watching Dune 2, I became quite the fan. Same with Robert Patterson when I watched... uh, uh, tenant. I was like, oh crap, this guy's actually good. And it also goes back for me to Zach Efron, who like 10 years ago, I was like, this guy's got it. He hasn't, like, he is going to be huge. He reminded me like of a young Ray Liotta. And yeah. now he's really 
freaking good. Like yeah, Matt but Gaffer then there's great. like I agree, but then there's like the Leo DiCaprios and the uh, River Phoenixes and the Macaulay Culkins who had range and presence beyond what I think these y- new crop of youthful actors had. Like DiCaprio was like doing the had his acting style all to his own as a young actor and you were like this guy has like a Sean Penn thing going on as a young man he just transforms into these characters and I think I'm not seeing that I'm not seeing these younger stars transform the way that a lot of younger actors had their style already laid out for them initially and it's like what's Timothy Chalamet's style well he's kind of just quiet and brooding and does the whole like my face is full of bones thing and everybody loves <laughs> that, it that is a choice yeah, though <laughs> let's be let's be clear that is a choice that he makes he, every and i like the choice he's like you know Here what comes old cute bone face his character mr bones <laughs> i'm gonna turn up the bones with this character i think just a little bit what if my well, he's telling wes anderson and fred dispatch what if my character just has more bones in his face in this scene <laughs> you know i didn't think of that timothy but that's Give brilliant go with it go Give with it shot. you know what we're gonna do an extra take on this one just do whatever you think is right if you want to add more bones add more bones no bones go no bones i just want to see All range bones. like i want to see Tim timothy do something a little different than I've seen him do he'll in the past there. six movies he's been in. And it's like, sure, maybe he'll get there, maybe he'll grow into it, but I'm just used to seeing these actors who have more than unique features be our superstars, you know? And it's like, our superstars today seem like we're just getting pretty people with charisma, but where are the at where like Barry Keegan, Kogan, Coogan, Coogan, is that his name? Mm-hmm. That motherfucker had range the second he appeared on screen. Well, then you He's just named one. one. You just named one. That's they're what I'm they're saying. Like, but, I, but but why isn't he, you know, he needs I want to see him in like leading man. Like, I guess he's playing the Joker in the the new Batman movie with Robert Pattinson, which should be great. Like, I want to see Robert Pattinson and that Barry Keegan guy, Kogan, whatever, Hulk Hogan, work together. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Co- Barry Hogan. <laughs> I want to see them. He's on the he's on the grave in Saltburn, just going. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then, you know, I was watching Pat, Robert Pattinson. We watched also kind of like come into his own a little bit more, which is you know w- whatever. I'll have the patience for seeing these kids kind of like come into their own things but i haven't i've seen the tim timothy chalamet thing in other young actors you know i've seen the the zendaya thing in other young female actors like i just want i just want someone to like bust through the scene I think that's there's like more examples than you think because there are like the paul danos out there right paul like Dano's paul good. yeah came he's out got of range. nowhere and he, he was like boom i am now acting right alongside daniel day lewis and doing a just fine but like i think they're there but and I think these examples of movie stars that were just hot faces were always there too. Like, yeah. I, I think this isn't new. I guess I'm just like, I the hot face, like I, I want more than just hot faces. Like I want you to be unique. I want a unique something about you that makes me attracted to you more than just from the like, oh, this is an attractive person. I want I want something else that attracts me to them, like your Barry Keegan's and your da- Paul Dano's. Like these are weird actor, character actor people that like Quirky. put their souls into their performances. And and I think the Timothy Chalamet's, the Zendaya's, the, the Shannon, or the, what is her name? Sydney Sweeney's. I think they know they're hot and they know that they don't have to really push themselves with range somebody sounds jealous yeah. somebody <laughs> sounds jealous. Uh, yep. I, I don't I, think i have the capacity to be jealous and that's jealous. time see the fuck out of my office it's been yep, 50 minutes done. get out of here <laughs> <laughs> that was my 50 minutes of cordia cordiality or whatever you call it elliot I, please please expand on your timothy chalamet thought tell me what's going down well, one is based actually in the word you just said, Joe, which is a hyper amount of jealousy because he looks like exactly what I would want to be in high school. That level of coolness that he has mm. is like with that that bone face of his is um, I go, oh, man, 
Look at that. Look at that little bone, a bony little mm -hmm. bitch just that doing great stuff. Bitch bastard. And I can't not like him. Like, and I see him and I'm like, I just, he's just a charismatic uh, kid. But I think, I think what happened, and I think this is what the problem is with what's going on here with Steve's dissatisfaction or yet to be satisfaction with it is a it is a lack people. of satisfaction. I'm not it, I'm not I'm not when, satisfied by their performances. I'm satisfied by their 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 yeah. presence. Their presence is very satisfying, but the performance leaves me like okay. Well, you guys are relying on the looks at this point. Wonka made me uncomfortable with Timothy. I'll tell you that. But I'll Timothy tell you that. But um, sorry, hang God on. dang it. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. I actually that. didn't mean to do I that. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Speaking For of our, <laughs> our audio listeners, we were talking about a, a racist, <laughs> racist trope um, from a long time ago. But uh, anyway, the, when the Illuminati decided what they wanted out of the new shipment of stars <laughs> and they all picked it, they take a little piece of paper out of the bowl. One said, we want one little boy made of bones. And then they said, we want a hot girl made of with balloons, balloon What's boobies. Right now? Well, and then, right now, bones and frowning bones, are really balloons, <laughs> One frown face. And uh, with Barry Kogan, we want a guy who looks like his face is made out of like old clay from a potter's trash can. They went to... <laughs> <laughs> they do. They did look like someone did go in. Did they... <laughs> they were like, they were like, you know what? I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to create this work of art. And then after 15 minutes, they're like, nah, I'm done. I'm bored. And then or they're, they're like, yeah. hurry, <laughs> hurry. We got to get him out there now. Like, He's shit. not ready. He's still not ready. ready. <laughs> God's like, I haven't just, gotten to the face yet. Just do God's it. God's like, I got so much stuff. Like, I got to get to 4 billion soon. Just, just get him out. No. It just really seems like. You know what's interesting about Sydney Sweeney? One, she's from Spokane, Washington, where I went to school. Wow. And he never that stops explains the dullness. It, never stops talking about it, which is very weird. Every interview she gives, she's like, <laughs> Spokane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how long has it been since we've had, because this in the 80s and 90s, this was for sure a thing, but I feel like there's been a break. How long has it been since we've had an actress get huge, I don't want to say simply from, but very much so because she her thing is showing her breasts. I know. And, it's kind of a she, throwback. And she owns it. She owns it 100%. Yeah. She yeah, makes she fun does. of it. And she knows but, what she's doing. Yeah, which is refreshing. She's not like hiding it. She thinks it's a joke. She talks about it. It's fun. But I don't think this is like an 80s or 90s thing. Well, mm -hmm. I think we had an Alexander, Alexandra Daddario. Is that her name? Alexandra Daddario? Do you know who that yeah. is? Yeah, 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 yeah. She kind of popped into the scene quite literally uh, in True Detective. And there was that legendary scene where this young woman shows the entire world her breasts. And this was a decision that she made with the, and the whole world said, OK. And the whole world said, OK, <laughs> we accept. <laughs> and listen, I think that we can't help as mammals, as you know, human beings, we can't help but find mammary glands titillating. And once we, and when they're on display, you're like, ooh. <laughs> and I think that there are actresses who propel themselves leaning into that. And we've seen it for a really long time, Joe. I, I mean, I think you're right. Sydney Sweeney is a, is one of the current ones for sure. But I think we've seen it for a while. Like when it, there's actor actresses that just so happen to, you know, they have they have a bit. I larger just think it bust. was it was just more prevalent back in the day, and I think we're seeing less nudity in films. One hundred percent, less sex scenes, less nudity, and she's just owning it like nobody's ever owned it before. And I think it's kind of fun, kind of cool. Yep. It also might be, I think that throwback to the 90s kind of like bombshell type of look is maybe what gives her such an appeal to some of the more right, the conservative. Thing. I don't know if you guys mm. have seen the thing with Sydney Sweeney, but there's a real she's obsession. Like, she's like the, the the picture child for them. Yeah. Like this is our this is our um, we claim Marilyn her. Monroe, basically. Yeah, yeah. they claim, they claim her. her. OK, yeah. that's cool. I mean, you know, whatever, dude, like, let's get it. You know, I think boobs. There's always been this kind of zeitgeist thing with boobs and butts and being like, oh, we're on the we're, we're in the time of the butt right now. 
and we're very focused on butts and it's very a butt heavy society mm -hmm. and then but then we skew back to the boobs and we go back to a boob i'm society. a little bit more of a knuckles man i'm always checking out the knuckles <laughs> yeah yeah i went through a phase where i was um into personality but i just couldn't get it like <laughs> didn't last. Yeah, that didn't do much for you in the <laughs> really hard to judge. <laughs> hard, yeah. Hard yeah. To well, anyway, the reason out. why I brought up Wait, this fucking Timothy before, guy before yeah. you move on, before okay. you move it's on, it's not a move on. This is a continuation. Well, no, I want to give you a little fact about humans and boobs that I learned while doing. Uh, I made a little show called Boob Trivia over at React, Love and it. I had to do a little bit of research. And <laughs> true or false? <laughs> little show called Little show called Boob Trivia. True or false, guys? Humans are the only mammals with permanent breasts. Permanent breasts? Like wow. breasts fall off? In the <clears throat> animal kingdom? They don't fall off, but they kind of go away, shrivel up and go. They go away. Interesting. Is that true or false? I mean, yeah, based on the fact that you're asking it, my, uh -huh. my instinct is to assume true. It is true. Yeah, we're the only mammals that huh. sport and only primates though, that sport permanent breasts. And they, they keep growing as you get older. They do? Yeah. They can. Huh. Isn't that fascinating? Isn't that fun? That is fun. Isn't Any other? Steve? What other fun? Um, do you know what? Yeah, Before, I want more boob stuff. You know what? what you, you know what well, other uh, celebrities have um, supernumerary nipples? Excuse, Excuse me? me? Supernumerary nipples. What did you? Can you say the beginning of that again? Supernumerary nipples. <laughs> yes, I'll have some. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> Sounds great. This would be a this would be a third nipple. We're talking about Harry Styles. We're talking about Zac Efron, Mark Wahlberg. They all uh, Chandler, not Chandler Bing, or actually Chandler Bing, but not Matthew Perry. Chandler Bing in Friends mm. had a third nipple as well, but not a real one. Not a real one. But the other ones, the pre ones, uh, famously have an extra little nip. I think one of them has four. Do we know why some people get extra nips? It's just a genetic they just, a a they abnormality. Just, yeah, they just grow around the, along the milk lines, mm -hmm. the milk duct lines that go down. So you'll have them like kind of like along these lines. So, yeah. we'll, so if you, exactly. people do have an extra nipple, it's usually in a where it would be if you mm -hmm. were a I, like a dog or legged yeah. mammal. Yep. Wow, that that's bonkers. I didn't know that. I thought it was kind of like arbitrary where the nipple showed up on the chest but if it follows some kind of genetic code that's really interesting yeah so anyways look uh look out for boob trivia if you want to learn more <laughs> i always am but um would you say that it's would is it <laughs> only humans that have that that have the supernumerary nipples probably not i i assume those are popping up everywhere okay yeah. And when do you think Joe will lose nipples as uh, men will lose nipples? Because there's well, no know, purpose I for men to have nipples. I looked it up and I found that exact fact. It's uh, 2049. No more nipples for men. Wow. Let's put it on yeah. the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first baby born with no nipples. It's or... <laughs> actually not that, Steve. Actually, everybody, even ones pre-born 1949, we all lose them at the same time. It's called the nipple rapture. They just disappear. Wow. Yeah. They go well, straight into heaven. They go <laughs> nipple straight heaven. heaven. <laughs> Nipple Jesus comes down. <laughs> Suckle me. I am I the think... nipple. <laughs> but nipple Jesus is not like Jesus with a bunch of nipples. Let's not be no. children here. N nipple Jesus, actually, you know how they depict angels in the Bible and how they're frightening and they're these like really crazy like depictions of wings and circles and shit. It's just a big one of those with nipples. a real, real saggy nipple. One nipple. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's beautiful. I mean, that is like that would make me tremble in fear. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. So, sorry, Joe. I know that uh, you know whatever. I know you like boobs or whatever, and maybe thought that boobs could be Big a fan. fun conversation to have. Big never are. You were wrong because we were talking <laughs> about uh, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet and his bones, and we were also <laughs> looking at the bones. <laughs> we were taking a look at Timothy Timothy Chalamet's bones. And we were, and did you know that he was cast as Bob Dylan in a that Bob Dylan total biopic? Sense. From a look standpoint, I, it looks makes total sense. Minus that he's too good looking. Because Bob Dylan's Bob Dylan also famously had many bones in his face on his and, skull and nipples. He had more bones on his skull than a normal person. Well, and the so reason we have they a, oh, go ahead. 
Well, I was going to say, we have a photo of Timothy, Timothy. Hmm. We have a photo it's, of Tim- It's kind of annoying once you know it, right? Once you know that it's, it's Timothy, <laughs> it's really annoying. It is really annoying. I can't wait to only ever call him that. Uh, and then everyone will just think, oh, you're doing that thing where you get his name wrong. Timothy Chalamet. The, right. His face was kind of killing. So many <laughs> bones inside his face, they cast him as Bob Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say Timothy Chalamet. His face was kind of crazy. Yay. <laughs> Okay. What are you showing? A, are you showing us I have something? a picture here of uh, a photo, a set photo, not not an official. This isn't like they're not ready to show us like official stuff yet. But this was like Timothy Chalamet on the street filming. Timothy Chalamet. And here's our first look at Timothy Chalamet as Bob Dylan. You're gonna show the yep. Yep, that's uh, sorry, that's, uh, sorry, uh, okay. That was, Sorry, <laughs> that does that does not make me. That makes me think he's doing a, like a Barry Coogan. Is that his name? Uh, but what's the one the guy we were talking about? Yeah, Barry Coogan, Keegan Coogan, Coogan Co- whatever his last name. He looks like he's trying to cosplay as him. <laughs> That's what it reminds me. Of. <laughs> well, because you know these boys might be at a race to see who is the yeah. bigger indie darling. Uh, and I and I honestly, I'm there. I'm here for it. I'm here for their. Oh, it's not a race. I mean. Tim Timothy's mainstream darling Barry is indie darling, right? But don't you think Timothy doing this Bob Dylan thing is like I want it all? I want the indie darling thing. I want the big. Well, A-list you're star assuming thing. it's an indie movie. It's probably going to be a big studio flick. I guess it could be. Might be Oscar yeah. bait. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing: the reason he was cast as Bob Dylan, you think it's just the the looks? It's not it. Actually, him and Bob Dylan are the only recorded humans to have. 426 bones in their body Whoa. while everybody else only has 206 mm. guess where those bones are is this from that show you're working on that react called the face. how many, bo- <laughs> how how many bones how many bones yeah but i call it boner how trivia. many bones <laughs> just to throw everybody off it's boner trivia this show's called bones about it and it's about how many bones each celebrity has and we go down a list of we, we actually go down a list of who has the most bones. Bones, bones, bones. Well, let me who see. Who has this the di- most bones? I'm trying to see. Okay, upcoming. A Complete Unknown. That's the name of this uh, this Bob Dylan uh, movie. And who's dr- – oh, Elle Fanning's – okay, yeah, this is a big movie. James Mangold is directing it. Yeah. yeah. And it's got Elle Fanning and Nick Offerman and Edward Norton in it. Wow, fun. See, Timmy Timothy don't do no indie darlings anymore. Uh, I do love I do love James Mangold though. I thought uh, Logan was real good. I did not see Ford v Ferrari, but I was appreciative of what he did with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Ford I, v I, Ferrari I, was fun. Oh, you liked it? It was good. Mm-hmm. I like yeah, it. Yeah. I, I appreciated the Jones flick too. Um, yeah, me too. I liked it too. Uh, furthering the the uh, grown men talking about younger men that are doing the things that our younger selves wanted to do. Um, I also really, really appreciate Tom Holland. I think he's a charismatic, good little actor. I like Tom Holland. Also very nice. I think Tom Holland is a good actor. And I also think that he might not have much range yet. We might see him come into his own. But I see him kind of being a fun to work with, kind of like a down-to-earth kind of person. You know, who knows? I feel like I feel like with chalamet like he i don't know for some reason i have like a chalamet is the take me seriously guy and tom i don't think he is i'm having fun have you seen chalamet's like he's had some really just kind of down-to-earth fun interview stuff he was great on snl he he was having fun he was like letting loose like i think you i i think you're projecting upon chalamet you think timothy timothy chalamet is is having as much fun is like as much of a fun person as Tom Holland is? Yeah, well, I, I interesting. Can't say that, but I, I don't I, see that. I think well, you're at least in what they show us in the marketing worlds. I don't hmm. see that. Yeah, I, I haven't seen a, a stick up his butt version of him yet. Uh, I will say, performance wise, I think I haven't seen Chalamet be like that funny, fun, goofy guy. Because even like Wonka, that was like i think a miss for that dude even though i don't think it was that bad of a movie but like 
he just was there's something about his like performance in that that got <clears throat> that was the only thing where i was like ah, i don't want to get on like the hate wagon uh toward him but i didn't like it and it, I, I think it was he was trying to do the goofy thing and i was like i want to see you brood again mm. 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 but you guys did you guys not see wonka you can see what he does that. from the trailer it's all like oh, woo, woo, and i'm I like heard that it it's... was surprisingly not bad it's That's not that too. bad yeah because it is the director was the paddington director and he makes just brilliant movies Ma- yeah. yeah paddington those paddington. paddington movies are great you know steve mm-hmm. you're you're going back to the range conversation uh and i think you're just you are wanting something more in your in your your elder age but again all the big stars back in the day, not all of them had range. Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise, the biggest movie star That's on the true. planet. He ain't doing shit other That's than true. Tom Cruise. That's you know? true. That's People true. just want to see charismatic folks on, on screen. And this is a bad example, but like <laughs> Brad Pitt is that too, but Brad Pitt does have range. Because Brad Pitt could have never done any range and he could, people would have just been, I'm going to watch this guy just be this guy because he has the charisma and he's cool. But he actually, I don't put in the same category because he has massive range. And for sure, because you saw Brad Pitt go from like, you know, Fight Club, Meet Joe Black, and then you saw him do the guy in 12 Monkeys, mm-hmm. which was like such a departure from the pretty boy thing yep. that he does and i and and even you know i was thinking like because what was it about tom cruise more than just his looks that like kind of made him like an a-lister and i think there is like an aspect of scientology his... <laughs> well yeah for sure that's the real reason why he was an a-lister <laughs> but i think that tom cruise he did that thing tom cruise would do that thing and maybe it took us a long time to like learn what it is but you know that thing he does where he's got that like he kind of breaks in a moment he'll be serious and then he'll go like <laughs> he'll kind of have his like weird like big grin and like he had this like thing that he does that was like very Tom Cruise. Like that's what I meant when I was saying like I haven't seen like Timothy Chalamet or even Tom Holland or Zendaya do the like this is the this is like a quirk they do. This is like a thing they like an acting thing that they do that makes them uniquely like when you learn to do a Tom Cruise impression. You haven't noticed that Zendaya lets out like a really loud fart every five or six lines. You have Damn, seen, I have not have noticed that. She, <laughs> dude, she not cocks noticed a she cocks a cheek and everything. That's Watch why she's frowning. frowning. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Tom Cruise, uh, he has two things. One is he does, well, he he doesn't blink. That's like one of his big things. He's yeah. like, that's the secret. You don't blink. And then also he was one of the shipments from when the Illuminati was coming up back in his day, mm. taken out of the bowl. They were like, we need a center tooth. And a center tooth is someone who, when they smile, it's charismatic and it looks nice. But if you look closely, you will see that he has a center. He tooth, does have a center but, tooth. It goes right is, down the center of his face. Yeah. Which is really like you know I'm sure he Tom does Cruise he really? has a few <laughs> yeah he does pull up yeah. a photo can we pull You'll up a never photo unsee it You'll never unsee it I'm gonna and, look at this right now because <laughs> it, it makes him both attractive but still off quirky. kilter enough yeah, to quirky. be appealable to to men Yeah, Whoa, yeah. The Illuminati know what they're doing I'll yeah, never not do. see it I'll never not see it again Well I think that's why Barry Keegan is also like a yeah. unique kind of you know he's handsome but he's also got this kind of unique look going on you know i i like that i like i like a not traditionally attractive like good actor that's also kind of handsome and and attractive but what about you know do you like that uh quokka looking mf -er that is in the sydney sweeney romantic comedy movie because they seem to be pushing him on us and i am not sold on that he's in twisters glenn Glenn howerton yeah not glenn howerton glenn howerton is excellent though Yes, Glenn Howerton's from fucking Philadelphia. Sunny. Yeah. Who are we talking about? The guy in that new rom com with Sydney Sweeney? It's something yes. like that, though, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He's like a pretty boy. He's like Quoka. a hunk. Glenn like a something, Quoka. right? Or something Glenn. Anyone Glenn, but yeah. you. Hey, Glenn Powell. Thank you. Yeah, see, he's handsome. He's definitely handsome, but he's got like something's up. Something's he's zoological. Kind of- there's a yeah. zoological handsomeness because he looks like a little animal. Yeah. And then there's the other weird looking dude who plays the chef who goes, yes, chef, yes, chef. Oh, yeah. That, see, Alan that White. guy. That guy. So here's, yeah, our, here, here's our Glenn Powell. 
And this no is a handsome thing. man. I mean, look at this guy. Yeah, he kind of does look pull like up a, wolf. a cloak. There is something. He's got like an animal yeah. pred alpha predator kind of thing going. Who are we looking for? He looks like what... kind of an uncooked Hemsworth. Like he, he like yeah. came out of the oven a few minutes early. He does look like an uncooked <laughs> Hemsworth. <laughs> I, I, uh, Matt and I saw Dune Two, and the, you know that guy that the, I didn't know he was the guy that played Elvis, but the guy Austin who played Elvis Butler? is in there. Austin yeah, Butler. that's a handsome looking gentleman for sure. That was another one. That movie made me go, I don't know, but that's Austin Butler guy. And then after that movie, I was like, mm-hmm. exactly. So there, there's a young handsome man with fucking range. That's the range I'm talking about. This guy can be scary and fucking creepy, but then he was Elvis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. His the voice opposite bothers of me. Scary and creepy. He's got that like satin, um, like too smooth voice when he talks. Like it makes me feel lesser as a person because yeah. every it's all very like hey have you seen interviews with him where oh yeah you're doing that like he's got like a cartoonishly well, sexy man voice yeah but he also you were still talking about the elvis guy mm-hmm. yeah that guy he he had to pay a team to un elvis his on elvis him yeah <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's so but he got too he went too deep into Elvis. <laughs> he went full Elvis and you should never do that. Uh but when I saw him in Dune 2, I was like is this a Hemsworth or a uh what's the other family? Um The guy that was it, Pennywise. Oh yeah. Scars. Yeah, I know. Scars. I get them yeah, confused. I was like is this a Skarsgård or is this a Hemsworth? And Matt was like, "Yes." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I, uh, who's I, um, <laughs> who's the I other guy we were going to look for real quick? Paul Allen White. And okay, he ahead. is like if the other dude is a quoka, this guy is like an anteater or like some sort of a herbivore. <laughs> Wait, are you sure his name is Paul? Oh yeah, yeah, Paul Jeremy. Something Allen. like that, Jeremy. Oh Jeremy Allen. Yeah. Yeah, 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 dude, yeah. I like Jeremy. This Jeremy Allen White guy looks. He's got like a Paul Rubens kind of thing, a Gene Wilder thing. Gene Ooh. Wilder for sure. Yeah, going on. I, Girls I think he's great him. too. Chef is Girls great for that. Love him. Well, because yeah. he's got that like I'm a guy you could see at the bar, like working at the bar vibe but also i'm really talented and charismatic and yeah i, I think too like, that yeah go he's ahead. got that almost lazy eye yeah. that is like mm, is one of those gonna drift it's off? like trying to get loose it's about to break free <laughs> yeah he doesn't really whoa <laughs> <laughs> yeah he doesn't have like a traditionally handsome thing going on but once you see him like moving and acting he kind of looks like a 50s uh huh. Like he could have been a uh, like a ben, like a star you can tell, in the fifties. You can tell, like you guys have heard my theory. He's already got actor big head. He's got big head. Yeah, he big features. Joe, yeah. I think about so your scary. actor big head theory. Pff, I don't know how many times a week, dude. It is crazy. <laughs> it's like almost a filter that I see things through. Like, yeah, big right? head, big, big head. head. You got a big well, head. Now I know why the ladies like him. He's Look at these boy. images. He's a dad. He's a dad. A father. A good father. Oh, yeah. Handsome yeah, man. Great actor. Yeah, these are going in the spank bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can hold on to these. I'll just leave that tab open. Uh, that guy that plays <laughs> Elvis, I, I was thinking after, we're, after Dune, I was like, that guy could tell me to do anything and I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the kind of he guy that could do that, I feel like. Actively scared me in that, in that film. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I might have to leave. Stab your own hand with a fork. Yeah. Okay. I really, I, I really enjoyed Dune Two. Like I had a very good time, and I liked it better than Dune One, which I think is incredibly slow. But I rewatched Dune One. I was like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought. It's actually pretty good. And then I watched Dune Two, and I was like, yeah, this is great. But I was so disappointed at the end because I was really buckled up for not having to watch another Dune. I was like, please wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it up. Dude, and I come felt like on. They were, There's I no they way you up. felt like they would I did. wrap it up. Really? I was hope, no, I was hoping they were because they were hyper like finishing storylines at the end of that movie that I was like, it's going a little fast, but at least I don't have to wait for another. And then I got to wait for a fucking another one. I hate it. Do you, have you heard though that the third one is like, there's like one, I mean, spoiler, I guess, but like it apparently the third installment or the last of the book, the last part of the story is mostly like just philosophical discussion. Like there's no action. 
in that series. <laughs> oh. So everyone's like, what are you going to do with the third movie? Because it is there's like one big thing that happens and then just talking about everything that happened for hundreds of pages, I guess. So who, who knows? I'm well, sure we'll it'll see. be great. Yeah, I keep hearing the director saying something about how the other books have been called unfilmable or un- unmakeable into movies or something. And I, and I, we- I, I certainly don't want to see that. But if the, he's handled the series so well at this point, he's almost got like a Peter Jackson with Middle Earth kind of hold on this mm-hmm. franchise. And people are now looking to him to like at least finish it off, right? So I've heard that like we'll probably get the third one and then that's it. But there's Isn't like a it, whole bunch of other books or something. It's, we live in a different time for sure because after the first one and I think after this one, the next one was never officially greenlit. Like they yeah. wanted to make yeah. sure that it did <laughs> yeah. well, which is wild. Crazy. Wild. Yeah. Well, and also, the, Joe, I think about a lot how we at one point we were talking about how you don't really need to see the first one at all, really. Like the second one has like kind of everything you need, including uh, an explanation of things that happen in the first one in a concise way that doesn't really require you to watch the whole first movie. You could movie. walk into it blind, yeah. Yeah, you could just watch the second one and you don't really need to know. Like if you love the second one, you could go back and watch the first one and then get all the stuff you loved about the second one in the first one. But it's like... It's interesting how you could just skip right to it. You could just well, skip right to two. The director's name Dennis Villanueva. Villanueva, yeah. Villanueva. He, I have never seen a director present the concept and image of scale better than this director in any of his movies. He does big. Oh, he for actually sure, yeah. makes you feel like things are gigantic in real time and in actuality, like. People versus the ships, people versus like yep. know, the, the landscape, all of it, the worm. And he did it in uh, Arrival as well with the big ship that was just mm-hmm. floating there. He just yeah. does it so yeah. fucking well. There's a scale, there's a scale, and there's also like a design that he, like, because really in Dune 2, uh, you know, the. For those of you that haven't seen it, I'm sorry. I'm spoiling something very small. But at some point, and I think you even see a little bit of it in the first one, but the bad guys, I forgot what they're called. I mean, there's a lot of bad guys. The guys that are, like, violent and gross, the, the like, the, the Skarsgård guys. Baldy like McBlackies. Yeah, the, the guys that wear the black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the bald, bald black outfit, bald mm-hmm. black, bald guy black outfit. The black outfits means they're bad. Those guys. What? So, <laughs> the the, the uh, there's a moment where they're like floating, like almost like they're underwater, but they're like flying. Like mm-hmm. it looks like they're f- mm-hmm. f- floating underwater, but they're flying, and it looks so fucking cool. It's like it's such so cool. a simple visual. So sim- that you never would imagine could be done well and work as like a anti-gravity kind of like technology. <laughs> you know how, what's, what's that sketch where they're like, are, wait, are we the bad guys? Oh um, yeah. The... <laughs> Mitchell and Webb. Yeah. So that Mitchell and Webb sketch, do you think like, cause we always do prepare, like portray the bad guys in black. Do you think the got the bad guys on the other side are just like those goddamn <laughs> other bad guys always wearing their colorful clothes and their, their non monochromatic wear. We need to destroy them. Well, it's, funny, <laughs> it's funny too, because there's like a moment in the second one where, uh dave batista's character like fucked up real bad and uh you're like oh we're gonna see him get punished or something and there's this weird like voyeuristic like aspect of like oh how are they gonna do it these guys are so evil and bad like what how how do they get there how are they punished within their own ranks like you know because in star wars darth vader would just choke out a guy and kill him and be like all right now you're in command and so that's like the epitome of an evil ruler is like if you fuck up even a little bit you get fucking killed and there was that aspect of it where i was like why would you join why would you be a part Mm -hmm. of this team (laughs) if the punishments are fucking horrifying i think about that every time like with mafia movies too where i'm like (laughs) are you making that much money like that you're willing to get shot (laughs) i think it's i think it's the prospect of making enough money the kind of money you'd make if you had a skill that you really put work into 
but you get it for doing really brutish, not using your brain type shit. And I think people would rather get rich that way than have to go through the system and earn the money in a way that is kind of like a helpful societal contribution. <laughs> I think I think money is the the uh, the gateway drug to those yeah models. right. And then you get addicted to the power and the protection is what that really is what it is. And having people uh, below you. Yep. So I went to Google and having people blow you and having yes, people Elliot. blow. You. Yeah, power, blow you. yeah. Power, man. Blow. Power and money. <laughs> hey, power and money, boys. That's what it's all First about. First you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the women, and then your boss chokes you out. Then your boss <laughs> does something really fucked up to you if you fuck up a little bit. And I was like, They're... what happens if the good guy, like I was trying to think of like when they have the good guy teams, what happens when someone fucks up? on the good guy team. And it's very hey. much like a conversation. Come on, so man. They open, up with a, me. <laughs> they open up with a compliment and then they say the bad thing and then they close with the compliment. It's like a, it's like a little sandwich. It's a little criticism sandwich. And hopefully they uh, they take the good with the bad and they go and they learn. <laughs> and then Listen, there's you can't be the... taking the spice, okay? You can't just be taking the spice. <laughs> okay, we saw is, you. That, is that okay? Is that okay you don't take the spice anymore? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry that I have to talk about this with you today. I'm sorry. You know, I really, know. this is about this is a reflection on me more than anything else. Now come on in, and can you close the door behind you? It's like, okay, oh now, shit! Now before you go, we, it's been 50 minutes, so we have to shut this off. But I'm going to shoot you in the leg. <laughs> but sorry. in order to not appear weak to the other guys, I have to shoot you in the leg. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, like, and then there's people in the audience who watch that, and they're like. Dude, that's the weaker team. The weaker team is the team yeah. that talks to each other. The the stronger team is the one that has repercussions, violent repercussions when when people fuck up. And that's how you get strong non-snowflake. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's Steve. most of our demo, dude. Keep talking Easy. like that. I think I'm picking up on something. I think you're winning me over. Yeah. Is there anybody else that talks like this that maybe I can listen to on a daily basis? Do you have anyone basis? on the internet? Any yeah, Joe people Rogan. Talking? I'm really interested. Okay, Joe Rogan. Never heard of him. Let me write it down. <laughs> How do you spell Joe? <laughs> oh, by the way, just for fun, I went to Google. You guys ever been there? Mm-mm. And I typed in, how do you pronounce Dennis Villeneuve, Villeneuve the guy that directed Dune? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to find that out right now. Are you guys excited? Oh, yeah. so, so excited. This is if a big it's learning Timotei. moment. Timotei. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's that Peter Sellers. Okay, here we go. Why is it echoey? Oh, I know why. Do you guys hear that echo? Sorry about that. No, not at all. Oh, good. Don't hear a thing. Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve. So it's not even Dennis. We've been Dildo saying Dennis. Dildo will go. Dildo will go. Dildo. Um, I will, on the note of Dune, um, when, speaking of the Illuminati with the bull and the new shipment of stars, they also had one where they were like, we want one that just looks like a praying mantis. Mm -hmm. any, any guesses on who that might be? Uh, on the uh, 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 uh Oh man, I feel like a bad guest could get me canceled. But I'm gonna say Anna Taylor Joy. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we want bone face. We want a praying mantis. We want. But, but that's a range. About, you want to talk about that's a, a range. Young, that's, that's a range. Young, exactly. That's a young incredible. actor with range. That's what I'm I love talking her. about. And I gotta say, man, I would rather watch Florence Pugh. Is, how do you pronounce her name? Let's put Pug. that in there. Florence Pugh. I don't get her yet. I, she hasn't quite grabbed me, so I don't know. Have what you the, seen her in enough stuff? I've seen her in in Dune and uh, Oppenheimer. And Did you? You, you didn't see Hereditary? No. Or not Hereditary. Uh, uh, Midsummer. Midsummer. Oh, she's the one with the hat and flowers. Yeah, yeah, with the flower hat. Yeah, no. Yeah. Florence Pugh. I, she seems pretty, but I, she doesn't grab me like Anya Taylor Joy. Um, I think she's wonderful, and I think she has range, and she's, she's just. I think she also has that like she's beautiful, she's very attractive, but there's something, you know, it's like, you look at Zendaya, you look at Sydney Sweeney, you're like these are beautiful women, but then you look at Florence Pugh, and you're like that's a beautiful woman, but my brain is telling is. It, it's hard. It's like I can't quite. Her features are unique. Are they? I think so. Yeah. 
I'm hmm. pretty sure she has eyes and a nose and a mouth. That's not too unique, Steve. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about like an Anya Taylor Joy. If you want to talk about a unique, that's a, very a, a unique she's a visage. Unique. I've right? never she's seen got... a human that looks like her. Yeah, mm-hmm. she very looks different. like us next. I think you said this one time, Steve. She looks like the next stage of evolution. Yeah, she does look like the next stage of evolution. She lo- she's so unique that I think her eyes are running away from each other. Mm-hmm. They are. Well, they they're confused too because they're like, yep. "What is? What are we?" Yep. It was funny because I hadn't seen a trailer for the Furiosa movie, and I saw it when I went to go see Dune for the first time, and I was like, "Whoa, this is really cool!" And then they showed us that Anya Taylor Joy is playing a young version of uh, Furiosa, uh, of Furiosa, which was played by Charlie Theron. Charlie Theron, and I was like. Does that mean that in this world, when you get older, your eyes become closer t- to your nose? Yes. Because mm-hmm. I'll tell you, Charlize Theron doesn't have Anya Taylor Joyce's eyes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what are we to believe here, George Miller? In your universe, the eyes move. Can you tweet I've been... that out? <laughs> tweet it out. Tweet it out. Let's find out, George. What's up? I've... <laughs> I, I have personally been going on a watch some old movies run for some reason. And when I mean old, that just not of the last couple of years. And I watched uh, Fury Road again. And that freaking movie should have won the Oscar. Dude, it I agree. Fucking cool. good. I it's agree. I remember being good. amazing. It's yeah. a masterpiece. Oh. And then I and then I saw some people talking about how the new one looks like it uses like way more CG than that mm-hmm. one did. And people were like, it's because you could never do that movie again. You could never do the one that they made Fury Road because they really did a lot yep. of really a dangerous, unique, old school style insane how trickery to make that movie work and that's like a big mess that had a youngin that had range but it's probably not considered a youngin anymore in nick holt oh nick holt is great see yeah. i, I really hate months. on timothee chalamet and uh, zendaya a little bit but i'm telling you man i got a whole army of really good youthful actors with range that i love uh, and the other one I watched was Ready Player One again. And Steve, you're not gonna like this, but I love that movie. I officially love it. I think it's great. Guess what? Think, not I, only am I cool with that, I agree. I think it's what so movie? rewatchable. Ready, Ready Player, Player one. one, so rewatchable, so fun. I have a great time all the way through. I've read the book. Is it perfect to the book? No, but the book is just a pop culture masturbation fest, anyways. Yeah. It's so much fun, and I'm glad Spielberg was the director. It's fucking amazing. There's parts of it that are a little cringy and, like, maybe, like, out of touch with, like, gamer culture sure. in a way. But in a, for, for a movie that is meant to entertain the widest possible audience, not white, wide. But it can. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> it's not against, you know. No, not at all. Hmm. Right. Anyway, super fun. I, love I it. also enjoy it very much. I enjoy that movie. I think it's really fun, and and uh, you can turn your brain off and have a good time. It might be like if I was forced to make a top ten Spielberg movie list, it would be in my top ten. Really? Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, top I love 10. it. Top hmm. ten. Yep. Okay. Let's Minority work on Report top would 10. be. Minority Report would be in my top ten. Yeah, that would be in my top ten. Jurassic Park would. Dra- what would be in the top five? Oh, I'd have to think about that. Uh, you know what, what my number? How about top three? Let's do top three Spielberg Hook right now. My number one is Schindler's List. Okay, I love, I love Schindler's List. <laughs> what? Fair really? That's like a movie you love? I love it's it. It's very good. An yeah, incredibly f- made film. Feel good movie of the. <laughs> Doesn't make me feel good, but it makes me feel. It makes me feel. It's like it, a masterpiece. Yeah, it's It's like a really done. good documentary. And I hate to use this word with it for me. I find it incredibly rewatchable, like d- despite how it makes me feel. And but it's a good reminder of everything. I just sure. think it was handled with so much care. It's beautiful. The ending. Oh, I love it all. It's great. OK, well, if you're rewatching and really loving Schindler's List, Joe, that's really interesting. But this is the end of our hour, unfortunately. And so maybe you should bring <laughs> that up with the therapist, because I do think it's worth exploring next time we're talking. But <laughs> that's a wonderful segue to the outro, Elliot. Nice work. Well, let's work on our top three Spielberg. I'm going to do my top 10 right list. after this. Shut up. I'm and then it. we'll cut co- in the next episode. We'll do we'll talk about our top three Spielbergs. I guarantee in the next episode, we'll completely forget about this. But we're saying we're doing it now. I yeah. agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, guys. 
thank you for watching, Kevin. Thank you for editing. And uh And we just appreciate- to for the if, for Timote or any of the other like who are listening group that ended up listening, know that we only mean observations about your appearance in a jovial and loving sense and in no way are we trying to reduce you to how you look or something like that even though you should be aware that maybe certain casting directors will do that and that's something that you should be just cognizant of as you move forward throughout your your budding career that's really well said elliot thank you but i do think he he might have a few too many bones in his face a couple bones too many yeah dude don't <laughs> donate some of those bones the people yeah are man bones There's kids born without bones that could use some of those.